Welcome everyone, how you doing? It's me, Mr. 4K Upscaler. And guess what you're seeing here? This is Apple 4K TV. Now you're saying, but sir, Mr. 4K Upscaler, are you pulling our legs? What are you doing? Because we just see the Apple bag. Well, the reason you see the Apple bag, it's because that was the only place I was able to find it. I went through all these other outlets, Best Buy, Walmart, Target, none of them have it. They're all sold out. So your best bet, it's go to your nearest Apple store. And they have so many of them. You can go to apple.com and you can click and check the nearby local Apple store. You can find out in your zip code where they are so I highly suggest you go to the Apple 4k store and the service there it's excellent they ask you right away how can you help what you need and boom you're good to go ready to roll very quick really fast so uh, go to the Apple store now I want you guys to understand something I'm not being sponsored by Apple in any shape or form I went in there paid with my own cash total of $212, that's with the U.S. tax dollars, accumulated tax dollars, uh, on top of $199, so that's $212, means you're paying $12 tax on the product, so it's $212 total, so that way you know how much you need to have when you go in there to buy it. You don't have to buy a 64, they do have a 32 which is 179 plus 12 dollars you're looking at like 193 but I decided to go with an extra 20 dollars 22 dollars uh, and have 64 gigs so it was only 22 dollars so why not go with the 64 gig so anyway having said that let me go ahead and let me show you this unboxing of Apple 4k TV HDR and Dolby Vision Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this and go like this and guess what you're going to find? Ah, there it is. There you have it. Now, if you see some of the stuff here, that's my niece. She's putting up all of these uh, stickers. She likes to put stickers and stuff. So that's my niece. She likes to do that. Yeah, she's going to be a designer, man. She likes to design stuff and paint and all that. So she's going to be an artist for sure. So anyway, what the Kleenex is for, well, go figure out for just with yourself. You know, don't get any ideas. It's not what it's for, what you think it's for. So Kleenex is there because in case, uh, you know, I have allergies, I can use Kleenex, okay? Because I do get some allergies in my eyes and... Uh, my nose and uh, sometimes I sneeze so that's why they're there but even though I know you guys will have some comments to think otherwise all right now let's continue so there it is there is right here it's an Apple 4k TV uh, there's the box right there as you can see it uh, it looks exactly the same as the original Apple fourth generation TV However, the difference is it says TV 4K and it feels a bit heftier. It feels a bit heavier. That's because it has that fan, that vent, that heat sink. And of course, it has a much more powerful processor. It needs that powerful processor to handle the 4K HDR in Dolby Vision and future Dolby Atmos updates as well. The one I have is the uh, 64 gigabytes right here. And if you guys can see it. There you go. It says uh, 64 gig. So right there. 64 gigabyte. There, there you have it. Okay. This video is going to be about 40 minutes because I'm going to do the unboxing. I'm going to go this, uh, do the setup process. So the unboxing, setup process, and then test. So remember, that's why I'm doing 720p, so I can have more time to show you the unboxing, what's inside the box, do the setup, 
the setup process and then show you how it looks on the uh, TCL. The reason I'm gonna go with the TCL Roku TV 55P605, it's because it has Dolby Vision and HDR. But I'm also gonna test it on Samsung KS8000 as well. So without any further ado, let's go ahead, let's unbox this Apple 4K TV HDR. Okay, so the next step, it's going to be slowly unboxing it like this. Here we go. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Slowly put it aside. Make it look nice like that. I'm trying to make this look more entertaining a little bit as well. So put it like that next to each other. And what you're going to find here, let's turn this this way. Slowly, slowly. Okay, the first thing you're going to see is the remote control. Now this is a rechargeable remote control. It does come with the cable for you to charge this, okay? The major difference I see is that the buttons have been outlined a little bit better. Like the menu button, you can see it. Uh, it. It looks a little bit better. I like it. That's the one thing that I noticed. Now, let's pull this slowly. Get it out so you guys can see it. There it is. Uh, show you a little bit better. Outlook. You can see it a little bit better. You can see me. There, let me show you the back of it. it. has the Apple logo. You know, when you buy an Apple product, everything is top-notch. Then again, you know, that's, that's Apple. And when you're buying their brand, you're going to have everything top-notch. So there's the remote control. And you see right here, there's that uh, C port, that USB-C port that goes in to charge your remote. Okay, now that's pretty cool. So we'll put that aside over here, nice and easy. And then we're gonna slowly, slowly, slowly take this uh, out, which is Apple TV. There's the Apple TV, there's me. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the uh, fourth generation. I still have the fourth generation, but the main difference is I feel it's a bit heavier. It's a bit heavier and a little bit taller. The reason it's a bit taller because it has those fans. You see those fans over here? I don't know if you can see the circle of it. You see the circle? You see these fans? That heat sink and these fans, the reason why they're there is because of the processor. It has the same processor that's on $1,000 iPad Pro 12 inch. So that's pretty cool for two hundred dollars you're getting a really powerful processor not only are your movies gonna look great but your games gonna run faster uh, the, everything will move faster everything will respond faster because you have that processor and on the back here let's see well first thing first let me unwrap this I'm gonna unwrap this and then I'm gonna show you Okay, so I uh, took the cell phone out. I took the uh, the plastic cover out, and uh, you definitely can feel the weight. But see, these these are the the fans, these heat sink fans right here. See them? That right there. That's that's what's making it a little bit heftier and a little bit taller. Like it will stand out a bit taller, and. Uh, also, it's a bit uh, heftier, it's a bit heavier than the previous one. And this is the major difference you will notice right here. This is how you're going to know that this is the 4K version because it has a big gigantic Apple logo and these fans. It needs these fans in order to, uh, to keep this thing cool inside. Because remember, you got a very powerful processor. This is a very powerful processor that you're buying for $200, okay? So you're definitely going to, this thing's gonna definitely going to be, you're going to hear it. Like, you're going to hear some fans running and all that. So you're definitely going to hear it. Okay. 
And uh, other than that, in the back here, of course, uh, let me unwrap it so you can see it. There's another wrapping here that I need to unwrap. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like a stealth, stealth tape that's put around there. See this tape right here? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this tape out. And here, of course, you can see you have HDMI 2.0 uh, port right there, 2.0 meaning that you'll be able to utilize HDR and Dolby Vision. 2.0 means that you're going to be getting unlocked highest possible speed data on high definition media interface, meaning you'll be getting that static metadata and uh, dynamic metadata, which is built inside this box. You, uh, you will be able to process that through this HDMI. As you all know, static metadata, it's HDR10 that goes up to 1400 nits, which is maximum for HDR10. And dynamic metadata, it's unlocked that can go up to as many nits as you want. So Dolby Vision goes into category of dynamic metadata and hybrid log gamma and Technicolor Advanced HDR goes into dynamic metadata as well because they're using a higher nits of peak brightness, okay? And then you have your Ethernet port. I will be wiring this thing. That's how I roll. This thing will be wired. That's the only way I go because uh, you're going to be using a... Uh, remember, you're going to be streaming 4K. So first thing, uh, another thing I would like to point out before you when, before you go to buy this device. You have to understand you got to have a high speed internet, at least 40 meg megabits per second, or may I would suggest 70. Get a 75 megabits per second, you'll be fine. And make sure that you use ethernet port, wired cable ethernet port, to truly take the advantage of that bit rate that this thing will be streaming. Uh, Apple has state-of-the-art state servers up in California. So they will be able to give you the best possible bitrate stream. However, you will need that 40 megabits per second to utilize this. And I highly recommend that you use Ethernet port. All right. And of course, you got your cable. And that's about it. There's no uh, slot for memory card here. Uh, SD memory card. Do you really need it? I don't think you do. Because you already have 64 gigabytes. It's more than enough for the apps. Okay, how big is one app? Like two megabytes, three megabytes. You can like thousands of apps, maybe even more. You can put uh, maybe 50, 60, 100 thousands of apps you can put on this thing and still you'll be good to go. All right, so there you have it. Let's see what else we have inside the box. Let's check it out. And of course here, when you pull this thing up here, this is where you're gonna find your cables your uh ac cable it's gonna be right here you pull this out and there it is put that on the side over here and then down here you got some more information about the apple tv you pull this out and you're gonna find your cable it's some instruction manual you can read uh now this is the cable i was talking about it's very important that you save this cable this is the cable that you're going to be using to charge your remote control which is right over here okay to charge it you can use a usb port on your laptop or on your imac doesn't matter i usually use one on the imac that i have so uh it works perfectly so make sure that you save this cable and uh, other than that uh that's pretty much all there is to it now you will have to buy a separate hdmi cable uh I recommend that you go with uh, Audio Quest gold plated Audio Quest for 50 bucks. Uh, believe me, man, they're definitely worth it. Uh, I use uh, Audio Quest cables and I never have any issues in terms of like input lag or anything like that. As soon as you switch to the uh, that port, starts right away and it's. Uh, I was watching Transformers uh, last night by having my uh, Audio Quest HDMI gold-plated cable, and I haven't had any issues. It was working fine. 
I will do a separate video for you one day, guys. I'll talk about HDMI cables, and also I will talk about the uh, M cables as well. M cable has a little chip inside, but they're very expensive, but they do have a chip inside that upscales uh, the content, and that makes... But I would mainly recommend the M cable for PlayStation VR, and I will do a separate video on that. I will explain why and all that. There will be a separate video. Now, we're going to go ahead and plug this in, do initial setup on my... Uh, 55 p605 tcl roku tv okay so we're going to do that next okay so here we are on my tcl roku tv which is p605 model it has dolby vision and hdr that's why i'm using it so now i'm going to go to my hdmi 3 which is right here and it's also very important that you make sure that you make sure that your HDMI it's set to 2.0 if you don't know how to do it this is how you do it go to the home menu go to the settings right here and then go to input TV inputs click on TV inputs move right and then go to the HDMI mode. On HDMI mode, make sure it's set to 2.0. You see where it says 2.0? Make sure that it's set to 2.0. Okay? And once you do that, then you should be good to go. That way you can utilize HDR and Dolby Vision. So go over here, click on it. And you should be good to go. Now, the only thing that's left here, obviously, it's the, uh, the setup process that we need to do. That's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to go through a setup process here really quick. Obviously, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you my username and password and all that, but make sure you use your remote right here. And uh, follow the instructions. It's really not that hard. This step, you just have to follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Get your iTunes account ready. Your Apple ID, everything. Get it ready. And once you're done, then you're good to go. So let me go ahead and set this up. This is pretty much self-explanatory. Just follow the instructions. Obviously, you're going to click... Uh, English or whatever your language is. I don't know. Maybe you live in Deutschland. Maybe you live in France. Maybe you live in Japan, Korea. I don't know. You could be living anywhere. So click. I'm going to click English for mine. Make sure you use uh, touch sensitive buttons right here. Click on it. Actually, you will feel the click. When you click on this remote, you will feel the click. Okay, I just want to say that you will feel that click. It will be there. So you will you will feel it when you click on it. So I'm gonna scroll and click United States. You can even hear the click here. Uh yeah, I'll use Siri. Why not? I'll use Siri. Why not? I think Siri is pretty cool. Now I'm going to set up the device. I'm going to go and set up the device. Oh, I see. I don't have the uh, iPhone, so I cannot do that. Hold on. I have to go back. I don't have the uh, iPhone. I just forgot. <laughs> so this is only if you have iPhone. I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do, since I don't have my iPhone anymore, I'm planning on getting the iPhone X, but since I don't have my iPhone anymore, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up this manually, because you can set up this manually. Okay, so now what you have to do, you have to uh, put in your Apple ID for the iTunes and iCloud, so make sure you remember your... Uh, email address and also make sure you remember your password so you want to make sure 
that you have that written down before you do this process. So I'm going to go ahead and do this really quick. Okay, so once you are done with your password, uh, it's going to ask you, would you like to... That's okay. You guys can have my... Uh, the reason I'm showing you my uh, email address, you can also contact me via this email address. You know, obviously, you cannot access my iTunes account because you don't know my password. But the reason I'm showing you this, it's because you can contact me on this email address. There's two email addresses you can contact me on, which is the one over here you see. And then I have another one on the Gmail. But you can contact me through this uh email address as well now it's gonna ask you would you like to always require a password uh, I think this is a good idea to require a password because you don't want somebody by accident you know overcharging you or you don't want to buy something by accident you know so this way you will always have to put in a password before you purchase something and I think this is a good idea and I would set it always on require okay Another cool addition and another cool feature that you have, it's also a uh, TV provider. So if you have a Comcast or DirecTV or Time Warner, you can actually sign in with your username and password and you can actually get access to all of the apps that are available like HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, Stars. So you can actually do that, which I think is pretty cool that they're letting you do that. You see, like re like right here down below, you can choose between AT&T Uverse, Cox, DirecTV, uh, Comcast. Most likely, you'll be using those two: uh, Comcast, AT&T, and DirecTV. You know, those three. I mean, you'll be mainly using. I'm gonna choose Comcast. Click on it. And again, uh, we have set Compact Comcast Xfinity as your TV provider. You click OK. And now he's going to ask you for a password and all that stuff. So you can continue and download. Now, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and try Dolby Vision. So I'm going to go ahead and try Dolby Vision to see how it looks. Keep in mind, I'm recording this in 720p because uh, I need more time 